Hello, my name is Matt Greencroft and I'm the tutor on Virtual Pair Programmer's Java Fundamentals course. This course covers most of what you need to get started with Java programming. And if you are thinking about learning Java EE, Spring Framework, or Java Web Development with Virtual Pair Programmers, then all the prerequisites for those courses are covered on Java Fundamentals. Now, there are a couple of topics that didn't quite make it into the final cut of the course, and so I'm doing some short video blog posts to cover these. This is the first of those posts, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the keyword static. If you've done the Java Fundamentals course, you might remember that we did use the word static on the course very early on, but that I didn't explain what this keyword does or how to use it correctly. Let's first recap where we saw it in use. The main place that we saw the word static was in our main method of our main class. You'll remember that this is the method that is required to make a Java program runnable, and it takes the form of public static void main, and then in brackets, string, open and close square brackets, args. Well, at this point, we understand what most of this line means. Public means that it can be called from outside the class. If this is a method that is going to be called automatically when the Java application runs, then this makes sense that it should be public. Void means that the method doesn't return anything. And again, for the initial method that runs when we start our application, this makes sense because there's nowhere for it to return any values to. Main is the name of our method, and args are an array of strings. These are the method parameters. If we were to run this application from a command prompt, including command line arguments, then these would be accessible to us as an array called args. So what about this elusive word static? Well, a static method can be run without having to create an instance of the class. You might remember in our course that we created a UI class that had some useful functionality in it, such as the ability to print out a book. In order to call the print book method, we had to create an instance of our UI class, which we called UI in lowercase, and then we could call the UI.printBook method. Now, if we had made our print book method static, and all we need to do to accomplish this is to insert the word static, into our method declaration, then we could call this method without first having to create an instance of the class. We reference the method directly using the class name followed by the method name. Note that this is not the same as what we did previously, where we referenced a variable name followed by the method name, where the variable was an instance of the class. Let's have a go at doing this with our application so that you can see it in practice. So I'm going to go to my UI class that we created together and I'm going to find the print book method. And I'm going to make this a static method by putting the word static in after the word public and before the word void. Now you can immediately see we've got some compile errors. That's because the print book method calls the fixed length string method and static methods can only call other methods if they are also static. So in order to get this to work, I'm going to make sure that every method that is called in the chain once we call print book is also static. There were two versions of our fixed length string method. There's this one here that takes a string and this one that takes an integer. Both versions are called by my print book method. So I'll need to make both of these static as well. So I'll just do that. And hopefully, yes, it looks like now that this class is going to compile. Now, the fact that we've made these static methods doesn't affect any part of our functioning application. You can call a static method in exactly the same way as you do any other method. However, and of course, this is the point about static methods, you don't have to create an instance of the class to call them. To show this in action, I'm going to create a new main method. I'll create a new temporary class to do this. I apologize, I think the word class is just off screen. I've just clicked on the word class and I'm going to call this static testing. 
I'll give it a main method that's runnable and click on finish. Okay, I'll just get rid of my comments to make this a little bit neater. So in order to test this, I'm going to need a book. So let me just create one of those first. I'll do a book, which I'll import. We'll call it book one and set that equal to a new book. And I'm just gonna put some dummy information in here to get this working. I really don't mind what I put. Um, we'll call it hello. Um, we'll have an author of test and ISBN one, two, three, four. The branch can be uh, the word hello again. As I say, I'm not really concerned what I put in here. Number of pages, one, two, three. So that should create a book. Now I'm going to call the print book method of the UI class, but because this is now a static method, I don't need to instantiate UI. All I need to do is UI in capitals, which is the name of my class, dot. And as you can see, we've got our print book method and I'll pass in book one I've just created. Let's save and run this. OK, so we've now shown that we can create a static method and call it without having to instantiate the class. Just to be clear that this is what's happening, I'm going to just code up the other way of doing it. If this wasn't a static method, if that was the case, we would have had to create an instance of the UI class. I'll call that UI in lowercase. Set it equal to a new UI object and then call ui.printbook book one. You might have noticed that when we called UI as a class, the only method that became available to us was the print book method. Whereas when we called UI as an instance of the class, there were many more methods available. That's because these methods aren't static. If we've got an instance of the class, we can call any method on it. If we don't have an instance of the class, we can only call the static methods. Just to prove these are doing the same thing, I'm gonna save and run this code. And we've got our results twice. Now, it absolutely makes sense that our first startup method, our main method in our main class needs to be static because if we are running our application from a command line, for example, then we haven't got any code which can create an instance of main. But when should you use static methods elsewhere in your application? Well, there are generally two answers to that question. The first answer, which I always give to new programmers, is that you shouldn't ever do it. The problem with static methods is that although they can genuinely be of use in some instances, it's very easy to use them without thinking to shortcut writing new code that creates instances of classes. Misuse of static methods can result in programs not working as intended. In a way, static methods could provide a way of bypassing the object-orientated programming structures that we create in Java and it's a good idea not to do it, not to try and bypass these unless you have a really compelling and valid reason to do so. Now, I do want to give you an example of when it would be OK and in fact sensible to have static methods. Suppose I've created a class of helpful utility functions. By this, I mean methods which say format a date or do a mathematical operation. These functions do not relate to a physical object that can be modelled, and the concept of having multiple instances of this kind of class that contain these functions doesn't really make sense. I can have five books or seven DVDs, but I can't have three date format processes, for example. In this instance, the methods have no state. They don't do anything to any variable held outside the method and don't affect any other piece of code within your application. They really are self-contained pieces of functionality. And in this case, it would be appropriate to create these as static methods. Now, another use of the keyword static is to create static variables. These are variables that share their value across all instances of your object. For example, in our book class, we might have added a new variable to store the last used book ID, so that if I create a new instance of the book class, it can get allocated a book ID automatically by taking the next available number. 
In this case, we need all books to know what the next available book ID is. Now, in reality, we wouldn't actually solve the problem this way. But as I wanted to give you an example that fits with our project, I thought this might be appropriate. I'm not going to go and do this in our project code because there's too much code I'd need to alter. If we were going to do it this way, because hopefully we would have thought about doing it this way when we started writing our code. But if you want to have a go, then please do. We always access static variables by using the class name rather than the instance name. For example, if we'd created a static variable called last used ID on our book class, we would call it using book.lastUsedID, where book is the name of our class, and not, for example, book1 with a b in lowercase dot last used ID, where book1 is an instance of a class. Now you can use book one dot last use ID. That will work, but it's a bit confusing because how would you know or how would another programmer look at your code know that that is a static variable? Well, there is no way to tell. So it's good programming practice to always use the class name, not an instance of a class name when referencing a static variable. This is one of the dangers of using static variables and in reality, I find it's really quite unusual to have more than a handful of static variables in most real world applications. Many applications don't use them at all. If you've programmed in other languages before and you've come across the term global variables, then the equivalent of that in Java are these static variables. They're variables that are basically accessible to any part of your application. And as one instance of that variable, no matter how many instances of the object that contains that variable you create. One final use of the keyword static is to create the equivalent of constants in Java. Constants are variables that have a defined value at design time and that value can never change. We do this in Java by adding the keyword final to our variable declaration. For example, if we needed to declare a variable equal to the mathematical value of pi, which is shown on screen here, we would use the phrase public static final and then the rest of our standard variable declaration. Now, I want to stress, especially to those of you watching this video who are just beginning to use Java, that you really should avoid using static unless you've thought through the object principles and decided that this is absolutely the right thing to do. It can be tempting to use static as a shortcut and to avoid having to get into the depths of object oriented programming, but doing so is a surefire way to disaster. Well, I hope that this video has helped answer at least one of the questions that you may have had after finishing the Java Fundamentals course. There will be another video published very soon, which will be a short update to the chapter that covers automatic resource management. Don't forget, if you have any problems while studying the Java Fundamentals course, you're very welcome to contact us using the Contact Us page on our website. And thank you for watching.